you know, free just delivered the baby. No, Beyonce delivered the baby. It turns out it was Ty Ty's baby's mother that delivered the baby. So then she, the way this woman starts it off, it's like his, he just had his fourth child. You know, and apparently this 12-year-old girl is probably his oldest. I mean, I don't know. Oh, the girl signs her name. Hey, um, Jay-Z, can you please tell your man to handle his business with his girl, April? She gives her telephone at 901. Here, here it go. <laughs> Wendy, you can reach me on my job from 8 to 5 p.m. <laughs> and then you can reach me at my home. 901, here we go again. <laughs> Call me if you want more background on the situation. I also have inside scoop on those Rikers Island CO love affairs. Pressure bus pipes. I hope this will make him uncomfortable enough to take care of his daughter. Well, it's making me uncomfortable enough. Why do I have to get this stuff? I always feel as though baby's mother, father situation must be real bad when people come to me about it. I mean, admittedly so. This is not where you want to come and air your baby mama drama situation. So please, can can uh, can somebody over there at Rockefeller cut a damn check? <laughs> T-Pain's new CD is in stores today. It's called Rapper Turn Singer. Ashanti's new CD is in stores today. Um, collectibles, it's featuring a bunch of remixes. She was on Regis and Kelly this morning. I didn't see. But um, I'm sure she looked splendiferous. Now, I wanted to talk with you all about Gwen Stefani. Oh, by the way, um, I don't have a new people poll question for today. There's something going on with my website. But the one from yesterday, are you over 30 and still living at home with your parents? 25% of you all said yes. I am shocked. Same way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, I told you Christina Applegate and her husband have filed for divorce. Um, oh, gosh. There is a people poll question. Is it on our website, Zoe? Mm -hmm. What is the people poll question? It is, um, do you celebrate Christmas? Oh, that, oh, you got my question up there. Yeah. That was my question. I wanted to find out because so many people say either, eh, bah humbug, I don't celebrate, or I'm Jewish, or a Muslim, or I celebrate festivities. So... Do you celebrate Christmas? And you can go to my website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com and just, you know, holler at me, yes or no. Joelle Santana had, like, this whole teen idol fandomonium thing happen um, last week in Brooklyn. He went to King's Plaza Mall in Brooklyn. He was scheduled to do an in-store CD signing at the Sam Goody over there. Apparently, the crowd was so big that the security people over there feared that the glass to the store was going to shatter. Um... And then other people lined up on the balcony over top just to take a glimpse of him. And this is what um, Joel says. First of all, he says, I actually had to come through the roof. Wow. Is that an overdramatization <laughs> or what? He said it was so much love in the building, but the crowd was agitated because they had waited for me to arrive. And then it was so packed that people couldn't even see me. <laughs> did they fit his head in the building along with the rest of him or did they had to leave that in the parking lot because it's so big <laughs> because there were so many people that um, they were trying to get into the store and they wasn't trying to leave they actually bought in the SWAT team it was crazy because I had to leave after being there for like 15 minutes he says, wow. well he does have wow. the hot property in the streets right now you know what I mean? He, he does, you know. Uh, shout out to you, Joel Santana. You really are, um, how do you call it, doing the damn thing. <sighs> um, oh, what did I want to... Oh, okay, okay, this is what I wanted to tell you about Gwen Stefani. First of all, I had um, a story to tell you about those Asian hollaback girls that she travels with. <laughs> but I can't find that story, so I'll just stick with the lace front wig. And, and, and the picture... They rolled up on Miss Gwen. She had the Marilyn Monroe hairstyle, you know, short with the red lipstick and a white dress. Marilyn Monroe style. This says, a closer look at Stefani's hairline reveals a layer of fine mesh. A telltale sign she's wearing a wig. She's wearing one of those lace front wigs and she thought she'd be able to get, get away with it. They took a picture of her, <laughs> then zoomed up on the hairline <laughs> and got her good. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Oh, um, while we're talking about Joel Santana, I mentioned the big head. Listen to Eva Langoria. I've lost a lot of jobs because I was too pretty. And everyone's like, oh, poor you. But seriously, you don't get the good roles when you're beautiful. <laughs> What's the matter with people? What's the matter with people? Why do people behave like that? 
Did I have a double chin when I was doing that? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> One day we're going to be having the cameras in the room. You're going to see all the shenanigans. And I really could quite care less. Double chin. White. Like, you know, I'm like, I like, a, I don't, I don't let bad shots interfere with, you know, my comedy. Yeah. With my routine. Because I know sometimes, you know, the angles, but that's why I got all the um, silver fillings replaced in my mouth. Mm -hmm. nice. So that I could throw my head back in, in terrible, you know, gut wrenching laughter. And at least I know that's covered. You know what I mean? <laughs> the eye pop is a whole other situation. I'll probably have to wear sunglasses like Howard Stern or something like that. I'm not I'm not going through that every day. Ooh, my eyes popping open. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did get going on. Look, watch me move my boobs to this beat. <gasps> oh, oh my god. Yeah, but no, no, you have to see them when I you have to see them when they're not covered. I did them for the eye podcast. What do you call that thing I'm doing on those um on those machines? Um Podcast. 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 Yeah, yeah. Right on the podcast. I move I move my oh, eyes up and down oh, while like no, you have to see because I can make them spread like three inches apart and then come back together. Oh, like God. this. Ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum. Yeah, I can make my boobs clap. <laughs> my husband loves that trick. Oh, my God. He was the one who said, Wow, you should show people on the podcast. I said I will. <laughs> <laughs> and make a clap. <laughs> All right, everybody. I have got to get out of here. I do love you for listening. And uh, God willing, we'll talk again tomorrow. Take care of one another. Bye bye. He's part of people. <laughs> See you later. Bye -bye. Good night. Program complete. Damn, on the um, show, I forgot to talk about Joel Santa. I mean, uh, Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas, and I forgot to talk about Makai Pfeiffer. But I'll talk with you guys about them. Um, plus, we'll talk about a plethora of other stuff. Uh, the bonus hour is coming up next, everybody, on your radio station. It's 107.5 WBLS. This is Jackie Reed with the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And if you missed us this morning, here's a taste of what you missed. Got a whole pancake Come place. on. <laughs> Got album after album after album after hit after hit after hit. Talk now. Giving you the best that I got. That's Say it again. Right. Shut so your mouth. <laughs> Put both your hands together and anything else that clap. And show you love for me to break them. <laughs> Good morning. Have mercy. Mary. Girl. You deserve that kind of intro. Yes, Lord. Oh, put your hands together and anything else that will clap. You know what I'm saying? Some, sometimes it's that meat on the back of your arm. Sometimes your booty is just that extra. It's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Weekday morning starting at 6 on 107.5 WBLS. Man, Mr. Sansom. 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, Mommy, happy to go. Here. Uh -oh. oh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs. She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. Struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, Put that like, where? Whoa, whoa. Back there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40-something-year-old body! No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. <laughs> Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. <laughs> I just learned that the party last night where T-Pain got that gun pulled on him and robbed in the middle of the dance floor. <laughs> you know, that was Larice, our calendar girl's party. It was her debut, or, you know, the celebration of her calendar last night. Our wow. model friend that just left here. Wow. And she wow. was telling the, uh, the story wow. back there in the pink room. She was saying that people started running. She didn't know what the hell was going on. 
somebody got in her party with a gun. I was just, you know, scoping out who they were going to rob. Walked up to T-Pain, who was on the show earlier today. Um, by the way, his CD is in stores today. Rapper turned singer. And um, the T stands for Tallahassee. Tallahassee Pain. Um, walked up to him and pulled the gun. And Boo... <laughs> Boo wasn't able to do a thing. <laughs> Boo is Akon's little brother. <laughs> Boo froze. <laughs> Boo froze. And, and T-Pain just took off. As a matter of fact, the guy popped the chain and, and walked off with it. But T-Pain says, never you mind. He got a $30,000 chain that he's about to pick up. He'll be back up in the club tonight. He fired all his security, so it's just going to be he and Boo and a $30,000 chain waiting to be the next person's Vic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Kanye West, he did have his debut CD called The College Dropout, but now he's trying to encourage students to go back to college via the Free You Giveaway. It's a nationwide sweepstakes where um, $150,000 is the grand prize and it'll be awarded um, to put somebody in a four-year college. The Kanye West Foundation is spearheading this, and I think that that's terrific. Mike Jones' new CD will be in stores in April. It's called The American Dream. He says, every year I'm dropping an album, just trying to stay fresh in the game. I just want to let the world know about Mike Jones. I'm just trying to get branded. All right. Uh, BG is about to sign with G-Unit. Yeah. Well, here's the quote. We're in talks with BG to sign him to Buck's G-Unit South label. If BG does sign with G-Unit, he's going to join the roster, including um, Mob Deep and MOP, who I just spoke with. Um, what's today? Tuesday. Uh, last week, yeah, the last week. I spoke with them last week, last week, last week. <laughs> I spoke with um, Lays, who uh, handles business for Mob Deep. Lays, Fox, and Billy Dance and Fame, they were all up at 50 Studio working on the M.O.P. album. And Lays was telling me M.O.P. will be in the building for Don's and Diva's extravaganza. Fame will be showing off the 15 pounds that he's dropped and brand new fronts. Yeah. And uh, dance, you always look nice to me. Hey, Fox. And also Mace is on G Unit, so you know Ow. that's who that's who he'll be joining. Do you celebrate Christmas? You can go to the Wendy Williams Experience dot com and answer yes or no. Do you celebrate Christmas? Yes or no. Wendy, I desperately need your help. I just let a young boy turn me out. <laughs> I'm married with two young children. And about a month ago, I began an affair with a younger man. He's someone I've known for years, but I've never given a second look until recently when things started to fall apart in my marriage. To make a long story short, we saw each other at a party. I gave him my number and it went from there. Wendy, he was calling me every day, several times a day, leaving me messages and emails telling me how much he missed me and wanted to see me again. I was reluctant to let it go any further. As I mentioned, I am married, and I don't feel that having marital problems gives you the right to stray. But anyway, one Friday, he wanted to come see me, and I decided against it. But then my husband did something to make me mad, and I went away. We got together, me and young boy. And just drove around and talked. It was really nice to get the attention, Wendy. But later that night, things got physical. There were drinks involved. <clears throat> he was talking to me and touching me in ways I haven't been touched in years. And that was all it took. I gave in and I kissed him. And this man slayed me outside on the playground on a cold fall night. I went home with grass in my sweater, grass in my hair. My thighs were sore and my knees were scraped up. <laughs> my husband was told by me that I fell outside the club. <laughs> well, who'd your husband think you were going to the club with? That was just a sidebar. I was sure this guy would never call again, Wendy, but he did. He continued to call me every day, and we met up again the next week. 
twice, as a matter of fact. One night when we were really drunk, we accidentally fell asleep, and I had to lie my way out of it to my husband. Since then, he's introduced me to his parents, and we've gone bowling, and we've he, I've even taken time off of work to be with him. It's been like being single and having a new boyfriend. It's been going on for about a month now, but for the fa past few days, I've begun to notice that he's slacking off since the last time we saw each other he doesn't call as much and we when we do talk he's quick to get off the phone and it will be hours before i'll hear from him again he hasn't mentioned wanting to see me again yet he assures me that there's nothing wrong but wendy i know that there's something wrong see i'm the one who said from the beginning that he didn't owe me anything and he didn't have to make me pro make me any promises or tell me anything because he thought I want, to, I want to hear it. But he did it anyway, and I fell for it. Now I feel like it's all going to be over soon, and I have to go back to my miserable life with my husband and forget my temporary fling with the sexy young man. <laughs> Wendy, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Keep talking to him until he finally gets the balls to break it off, or should I be the one to break it off. P.S. I was planning on leaving my husband anyway before all this happened and I never intended on jumping into a new relationship but I feel this younger man has dangled a piece of pork chop in front of my face and now I want it. P.P.S. By younger man I mean he's 26 and I'm 30. She says damn near 30. So she's 29, he's 26. She's talking like she's 40 and he's 18. <laughs> Wendy, this isn't a big number difference, but he still is living at home with his mother and has kids, four to be exact, by two different babies' mothers. Are you out of your mind? It is what it is. He never wanted you to begin with. You know what he wanted? Oh, exactly. And the satisfaction of being able to turn somebody out. Because while he's not much older than you, as a matter of fact, I consider you all the same age, 29, 26, same difference. But the difference is, is that you've been locked into a marriage and he knew that there was, that, that you would be appreciative of getting strange. And he wanted to see that look on his face. It was all about his ego. And this had nothing to do with you. Leave him alone. Stop being pathetic. If you're going to divorce your husband, divorce him. But please don't think that, that you're going to just be able to um, bounce into the arms of the next man with two young children yourself. And you don't want him anyway. He's living at home and he's got four kids and two different babies' mothers. What can he do for you besides slay you? And if that's all you're interested in, then you need to grow up and wake up and understand that life is about more than just sex. Put that where? Back there. Out of her mind. Taking days off work. <laughs> Taking days off work to be with him. And getting slayed in the playground on a cold fall night with grass in her hair <laughs> and skinned knees. It's very funny. So busy on her knees. <laughs> oh, man. Wendy, do you make the lights at home go on and off by making your boobs clap? <laughs> That's from E.T. They don't exactly clap, like, together. But I can make them distance themselves from each other. Like, I'm mad at you. I'm ma I love you. I'm mad at you. I love you. I'm mad at you. I love you. Like that. <laughs> the only reason why I'm able to do that is because I have, my implants are under the muscle. So the muscle is still very prominent in the front. That's why I can. Wow. Yeah. You can't move oh your boobs. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that's natural boob. So it's all boob tissue exactly. on the front. Yep. See, my most prominent thing out front. Or, or my muscles. Oh my so, yeah, oh, I'm able to, I can move one at a time, <laughs> or I can move both of them together. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it for you. Watch. Next time I'm on TV, I'll show you. <laughs> it's got to be in my own setting, though. It can't be like, you know, on Axe Hollywood or something. <laughs> okay, let's go to line number four. There's a 40-year-old man who's got a problem with a long-distance relationship. I'm not a fan of long-distance relationships unless there's light at the end of the tunnel. Hello? Hello? Hi. Is this Arthur? No. On line number four? Yeah, this is four. Oh, okay. Well, you're not Arthur, but um, what's your name? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Sharice is on line two. She's 35. She just wants to say hi. Hi, Sharice. Hi. How you doing? Okay. Go Veronica. 
Oh, Veronica. Okay. What, what, <laughs> what is this old computer data from 2 o'clock th- hour? I think so. <laughs> hey, Veronica. I'm looking for some Downs and David tickets. Okay. Give her the numbers. Yeah. Where do you live? I live in uh, Rockland County. In Rockland County. Are they giving away tonight? She said she was last night. No, yeah, no. Well, she's not giving any away this hour. Um, I tried last night till 7.10, even though I knew you were gone. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is not Wendy. No, I know. Okay. <laughs> well, let me just ask out of curiosity. What? How old are you? Me? Yeah. I am 45. Yeah. <laughs> What does that mean? I was just asking. I was just asking because you know the party that she's having is a party. It's for everybody, but it really is embracing the you know the, the more youthful side of forty five. You could mm-hmm. you 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 are that, aren't you? Well, I am, but I wanted it for uh, for my daughter and for husband. Oh, there you go. Uh, that's what I wanted for. No, well, I mean, you you, you could have gotten in and stuff, but you you know. Because, well, I've been newlywed, so I thought you know that would have been a nice present. Yeah. Well, tell them to go um, to the website. Do, do they have a PayPal account set up? Or do you? No. Hmm. Rockland County, what's that near? I can't well, that is, I'm in that state. earmark. Yeah. Why don't you go to the Wendy Williams dot com? Okay. And if you press the button, um, you'll be able to purchase tickets there on the on the website. Okay. You're not giving anything tonight? No, no, she gave, she gave him away last hour. God, I just can't get it. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. I, I, I try every evening for an hour. I just be trying. Why don't you just purchase them and then give them to him for a Christmas gift? I mean, it's December 22nd. It's a few days before Christmas, but they're grown. They don't believe in Santa Claus anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I already bought them Christmas gifts. Oh, oh you did? Yeah. Oh. I just thought I would surprise them and let yeah. them go. Have a good time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's not giving away any tickets this hour, though. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. So I guess then um, Denise wouldn't be on line number one. Maybe. Let's try. Line one is, is frozen. Okay. Hello, Denise. Hi. Oh, is this you? Yes, me. Excellent. Hey, Denise. Hi, and I am not calling for Dons and Diva tickets because mine should be in the mail. Well, uh, I see that you have a problem with your landlord. No, 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 no. I wanted to give the young lady that called the other day uh, some advice for her landlord. Okay, well, go ahead. Maybe she's listening. Oh, okay. Um, first of all, um, if she's having problems, anyone having problems with their landlord should write them a letter. Mm-hmm. Put whatever their problem is in in writing. Send it not not do it uh, through the regular mail through, through some kind of return receipt or something. Right, certified. And and if the landlord does not, um, you know, make the repairs or do what he's supposed to do, they can take it to landlord. They can That's initiate the landlord tenant case, and they can also add to something called a rent abatement. Um, for example, say you have an elevator in your building and it doesn't work, mm-hmm. you're allowed a certain amount of money per day as a refund. That's mm. what an abatement is really like um, right. for every day that, it, that this service is not given to you. Right. And that's what she can ask for. Good idea. She can go in, stand up. She could go pro se, which means she represents herself. She doesn't really need a lawyer because you was suggesting a lawyer. She can go, but she has to have all her, her paperwork in order, all her letters in order, everything in order so that she can sock it to him when she gets there. Good idea. Okay. Thanks for that. Oh. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, my second thing was you said... Black, but black goes a whole spectrum. No, you're talking about jeans, formal, casual. What kind of wear to the dance and diva? No, this is a this is an upscale, grown and sexy. No black jeans, no black tims. Listen, sweetie, last year you said gown, and what did Denise come in? No, a I, gown. No, 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 no. I said I was wearing a gown because I oh, happened Denise to. Denise wore one too. <laughs> well, Denise, that's fine. You wear a gown, Denise is going to wear one. If you say gown, I'm going to put it on. So I have... Um, I'm wearing a gown this year also. Now, I know there'll be plenty of girls with, with miles of legs showing. Listen, you know, uh, grown and sexy simply means let's be grown enough and mature enough to understand jeans are not allowed in the building. This is I not the place for a, a sweater set, you know, unless your sweater happens to be made of some exotic skin like gator no, mink or, 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 or mink. You yeah. know what I mean? No, it, no I, I didn't. I didn't know. Uh, but see, last year when you said... Formal, 
I, I was outside, you know, coming in, and I saw girls in jeans and jean shoes and jean dresses. Mm-mm, and mm-mm, I'm mm-mm, like, mm-mm. oh, these young kids do not know no, how to dress. Well, here's what it was. When we had Dons and Divas last year, it was at, and this is one Regatta. of the... Yes, it was... Hold on. This is one of the drawbacks of having it at the Brigada, where there are thousands of people there gambling and just on the scene anyway. Mm -hmm. So our people were getting mixed up with the Brigada people. Mm -hmm. And that's what you saw. This year, make no mistake, the venue where this where this party is and people are wondering why it's being kept so cryptic, because you know what? Quite frankly, we want to keep out the riffraff. This mm-hmm. this party is for people who are really who already know the Dons and Divas brand name, mm-hmm. whether you've been to one or not. You're invited this year, um, and we don't want to give out the venue until the last moment. And um, the, the the place has one of the best sound systems in Manhattan. The light show is crazy. The VIP is set up lovely. I mean, this party is featuring hours and hours and hours and hours of open bar. I mean, and top shelf liquor. Because when I say open bar, sometimes you think of that throw-up mess that you get when you go on a package deal to hedonism or something. You know, or when you're on a cruise and you know, they go open bar and they got the throw-up liquor, bottom basement liquor, making you all sick and stuff. No, this is top shelf. <laughs> well, I don't drink, but I'm going to still have me a great time. Well, neither does Mary. And she's going to be having a great time, too. Yeah. Mary J. Blige. Listen, one last thing. Don't big up my coworkers. They will murder me. Okay. The 17th Precinct. All my coworkers, Officer Burgess, mm-hmm. Officer Ford, Officer Brown, Officer Stewart, all my cops, all my, uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, administrative aides. Yes. You know, Ms. Boom, Ms. Hassel, everybody from the 17th Street and everybody at the police department. Thank I you. Want to big up. Thank That's you. Better. Thank you. That's it. Now I'll see you on the 22nd, girl. Oh, okay, good. All right, bye. All right, bye. All right, line number five. There's somebody on here who has gossip about Eva the Diva's birthday party. Hey. Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. What's the deal? Hey, were you at Eva's birthday party? Yes, I was. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> so, what, so what did you see? What all was going on? I went in with Takara and two of her friends, right? Do you, and, uh, uh, wait, do you know Takara or you just happen to? I don't to- know her personally, but I know her hairstylist. So okay. We went in, whatever, and... um. You know, we was, like, near VIP. The car got in, in, in VIP, whatever, and um, I was, like, right there where the rope was. Mm-hmm. So you could see everybody in VIP. Okay. And um, I seen, um, I was looking at this lady who was sitting down, and um, I was like, dang, she looked familiar, but I couldn't really recognize her. I'm, but I'm thinking on my head, like, oh, she's ugly? Everybody taking pictures of her. And mm-hmm. come to find out, it was Star. And her husband. So I'm like, Star Jones. Oh, yes, no. Wendy. <laughs> she is so ugly. No. Oh my god. God. Oh my god. So um, all the paparazzi was taking pictures of them. Right. You know, and um, every time the paparazzi stopped taking pictures, they their body language was like, you know, kind of distant. Yeah, they disconnected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then. Of course, when the paparazzi came, they, you know, they got, they took their little fake pictures. So, um, it's like 2.30, and I noticed that Star and, um, Al, Al oh. got up, and they, I, they was leaving VIP, so I'm thinking, you know, they left for the evening, but Al came back by himself. Oh. And, uh, oh. mind you, in VIP, there was nothing but gay men. Oh. <laughs> so he was dancing oh. all night, oh. but when Star was there... He wasn't he dancing. Was sitting. Mm. If you go to alltheparties.com, Wendy, uh-huh. and look at the pictures, you'll see he, uh, her and him. You'll see a few snapshots of her and him. Yeah, I have one of them, I think, right here. Uh, one of them, she's sitting on his lap. Yeah, like, and, he, she gets, and he's looking like he doesn't dance. give a damn. She, she's, trying to, she's trying to give him a lap dance. And, um,. And she's looking like, bitch, get off of me. Look, exactly. look, hey, 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 band of merry men here. I'm going to pass the picture around the room. Look, there we go. <laughs> Wendy, but wait, but wait, though. <laughs> wait, though. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm, I'm in the top ten pictures on that website, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was there, and people was trying to figure out if I was a dude or a chick. <laughs> they thought I was like Chris Brown or something, but anyway. Mm. Well, um, we, we got we got one a very interesting picture. Actually, Steve uh, p- pulled the picture for me from AllParties dot com. But thank you for calling. No problem, Wendy. Anytime, hey Wendy. Yes. 
You lucky you're not a lesbian. I would have snatched you up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Bye. Bye, Wendy. <laughs> Shout out to all the lesbians. I love you all for listening. Line number three. Can you call her? Okay. Okay. Well, how about line number... Oh, oh. Um, Keisha's there. And she has a... Keisha, and she has a question about shoes. Hey, Keisha. Keisha. I don't Hello. So. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I. This is Harrison. I called him earlier, and by accident, I was hanged up on. She didn't. She couldn't hear me well for the diva. Don's the diva ticket. No, we didn't give them to you. Because we, we didn't say you were a winner. I know, but she hanged up on me before she took all my information. She's just. Oh, well, I'm I'm sorry about that. Um, we actually um, don't have any of those passes this hour. And uh, we gave them away last hour. Well, how come we only had one pair of passes today, but we had like five yesterday? What is going on? Hmm. So, Mackay Pfeiffer had a big party with the Studio 54 theme in the Woodland Hills section of California. And... Um, Bobby Brown was there, <laughs> and, and Macaulay Culkin and his girlfriend Mila Kunis. Are they still married? Or are they? Is that the married couple, or is that the girlfriend Macaulay? Anyway, Paris and Stavros were there, are and they still together? I know. But most importantly, what do all these people have to do with Mackay Pfeiffer? Exactly. Like, do you even see Paris Hilton and Mackay Pfeiffer in the same building for anything? And Macaulay Culkin. And Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Bobby Brown, but they say Bobby Brown made a cameo, probably because he walked in, he said, yo, bro, where's the flavor? Right. I am so gone. <laughs> I hear that, though. Ahmad Rashad, everybody. Lloyd from, um, Adrian Lloyd from um, Arizona sent this over. I was asking, did Ms. Ahmad Rashad ever play professional basketball? Uh, um, Adrian says, Ahmad was a superstar wide receiver in the NFL. But he played basketball in high school as well as college, where he was known as Bobby Moore. That's before he, you know, changed his name to Ahmad Rashad. So Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas, who's had so much plastic surgery from the neck up, she is barely recognizable when you look at pictures before. She has had like five different surgeries, including a partial facelift, an eye job, like the whole bit, like, like... The Inquirer, the Star of the Globe, one of those magazines, maybe it was In Touch or Life and Style, one of those magazines several months ago did like a, a picturography of Fergie through the years. Remember, I Taryn, I shared it, it yes. with you? It's like Fergie at 15, Fergie at 18, Fergie at 18 and a half, Fergie at 19. I mean, she got so much, like, like, and she's such a pretty girl, but just the, let the record show, she wasn't born this way. And the eyebrows, she got her eyebrows arched through a surgical like, like she's got stitches up in her forehead because she had to get that forehead pulled back far. Because, you know, Fergie's eyebrows, that's something that you aspire to have. Wow. That was done through surgery, though. Mm hmm And she's only, um, how old is Fergie? About 30? Yeah, she's 30. Yep. Because her boyfriend is Josh Jumel, and he's 33. And he's on that show, Las Vegas. So apparently Fergie goes over to the scene. Or over to the set where he films Las Vegas. And they say she's a real ball of fire. She's really assertive. And in the beginning, Josh thought it was cute. But the assertive has really just changed being a, just a plain old nag. Just a, just a real pain in the behind. They say she barks orders to him. And, and constantly, like, when are you going to finish the scene so you can spend time with me? Ricky, <laughs> when are you coming home from the club? <laughs> can I be in the show? <laughs> Ricky. So they call him, they call her Mrs. Boss behind his back when she comes to the set. Mrs. Boss. Don't forget, keep listening to the Wendy Williams Experience weekdays from 2 to 7 p.m. for your chance to pick up a family four-pack of tickets to the Color of Generations Night at A Color Purple. Wendy's hosting the night. What we're going to be doing, she's going to be joining you at B. Smith's for a pre-show reception. You'd be able to have your food and your drinks. And then, like, three blocks away is the theater. Then you'll all go over to the theater. Not in, like, a class trip. Everybody line up. We're leaving. <laughs> Not like that. But, you know, then she'll meet you over at the theater. And, and everybody's got their seats for color purple. So keep listening for a family four-pack.
Jennifer Aniston filed a lawsuit against the paparazzi guy who she's saying invaded her privacy last month. Um, this lawsuit was filed. He used a lens, very powerful, and took photos of her um, topless and or partially dressed in her home. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a person who's still stuck on that Madonna story regarding um, her black background dancer, Nikki. Oh, by the way, and I so don't watch American Idol that it almost doesn't even matter. Hold on, I'll get to the Nikki story. Do you guys know Julia Di DiMatto? No? She means nothing to me. She's a top 10 contestant in season two of American Idol. Hey, Nicole, Miss Stephanie, do you girls watch American Idol? Do you, do you know who Julia Matato is? Julia Matato. A top 10 contestant from season two? So it means nothing to anybody that she was arrested for possession of narcotics and marijuana and drug paraphernalia and drunk driving? <laughs> oh, damn. We can only be happy that it wasn't Ruben Stutter. <laughs> he needs press, but not that kind of press. Oh, Leslie's on line one. She wants to talk about Fergie. Hey, Leslie. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? We're talking about Fergie? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to comment that, like, she used to be on this show on the Disney Channel a while ago called Kids Incorporated. Yes, I remember which, it. Right. And I, she was, like, a little fat, so maybe she just got, like, really self-conscious and started getting all this plastic surgery in her face and things like that. Yeah. I, well, I don't know what it is. got to figure it's something that has a 30-year-old woman going under the neck. I mean, through the years, like, the, the changes started showing in, the, in her catalog of pictures. The changes started showing about when she was maybe 23 years old. Right. Because I even, like, when I first saw her with the Black Eyed Peas, I'm like, is that the girl from Kids Incorporated? Yeah, exactly. Was that her name on Kids Incorporated? No. I don't think so. No, that wasn't her name. I think she used her real name, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> she did away with her real name and her old face. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also wanted to tell you about a... I've been trying to reach you for the longest, a celebrity sighting that I had. Okay. But it was like back in May. Okay. I was in um, South Beach for Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. and I was in this club, um, and I was in the VIP um, section, and I'm sitting down, and I'm drinking, and the next thing you know, I look up, and Trick Daddy's standing right in front of me. Wow. So I'm like... Is that your daddy? And I said to my friend, like, you know, is that your daddy? She's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was acting real. How you doing with this guy? How you doing? Oh. Dancing all on him, like. Ow, and ow. both of them, they were just acting real. How you doing? I'm like, I know that is not trick daddy acting like that. Like, that was just so weird. There was tons of girls in there. He was dancing with a dude. Wow. Well, to each his wow. own. Wow. Wow. So I, I hear just thought I should tell you about that. Well, I appreciate that. All right, thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Love you. Take care. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye. Can I tell you one more thing about Mariah Carey before you get mad at me and throw a shoe at the radio? Well, I'm saying it anyway, because... Mimi is going to be on the American Music Awards tonight, and she's going to be looking thick and trying to hold everything in with a girdle and dancing with her hands, teetering on her heels and looking crazy. <laughs> but I love it. And I love Mimi. So, she was at a London record signing yesterday, Monday, and she had her assistant hold her drink to her mouth whenever she was thirsty. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it's disgusting, you know what I mean? But I love that she's got the nerve to be just so damn diva-y, and she doesn't give a damn. I get this great catalog at my house. Uh, Vivre, I think is how you say it. V I V R E. Vivre. I don't know. Shout out to the Vivre catalog. They have um, sterling silver champagne straws for I think 120 bucks. Wow. Exactly. That would be like nice. such. It, like if you were her friend mm -hmm. and you couldn't afford to get her some you know thousand dollar you know mini gift, that would be such a great gift to give to her. Or for your little Lord Fauntleroy from to drink his milk in the morning or whatever. Oh. 
Everybody, we're about to go into the break. This hour, the Wendy Williams Experience is brought to you by AARP. If we're all lucky, we'll make it to the AARP. <laughs> Let's go into the break. When we come back, I would love to take more phone calls. You all, you can call about whatever you want. That's the great thing about the bonus hour. You can call and gossip. We can talk about the Billboard Music Awards if you care. We can talk about, oh, I have to get you, get you that Gwen Stefani story. I got to get that for you before we go. So I'll do that while we're in the break. And, um, and then we'll be back with more of the Wendy Williams experience next on 107.5 WBLS. Um, Yo, what's up? This is Morris Chestnut, and you're listening to the Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. Oh, Morris, I'm so sorry to hear about your divorce. Oh, so handsome, so eligible. What will ever become of him? Oh, damn you, the crew. Wendy, enough of that damn Mariah Carey Mimi. And damn your interns. They keep answering the phone looking, looking bimbo. Why are they doing this? Three times it was done. The crew. They should be taking calls from all. Well, what are you all doing? <laughs> What are you all doing? Oh. oh, Jules backed up. Stephanie's not answering. And Zoe's taking a swig of her master cleanse. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Do you celebrate Christmas? Go to thewendywilliamsexperience.com. And you can answer yes or no. And we'll respond tomorrow. Dear Wendy, I just want to give you my two cents about Desperate Housewives. I totally agree with you in your opinion regarding Alfre Woodard's character. It doesn't fit with the whole scheme of the show. She's totally out of place. Whoever is writing the script for the show is trying to force her character storyline to be liked by the viewer. The hottest storyline, in my opinion, is Eva Langoria character, Gabrielle, with her husband and the nun. Yeah, that is a hot one. That is hot. That is hot. That is hot. Um, Jay is on line five. Let me just talk to him real quick. In. Jay, are you talking ab about a, b right. a big TV style camera? Are you talking about a little, you know, camera, take some flicks and, and take them home? Just a little um, digital camera. Oh, yeah, we'll be flicking it up at the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Right, I know people be up in there till the night. Yep. The one no flashes up in their face. Yep, yep. Okay, you know. No. So, all right, then. All right. Jay, Jay, did you already get your tickets? Yeah, man. Yeah. Now, you live in Brooklyn. Where'd you get your tickets? I got my tickets from you. Oh, you won? Yeah. What's up? You won from me? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad. Don't forget, Jay, you have to wear black, okay? Oh, I'm, I'm going to be doing it, Wendy. All right. We're going right. to be doing the damn thing December 22nd. Doing the damn thing. All right. All right. Thank you for calling, Jay. All right. Bye bye. All right. So here's what's going on with Gwen Stefani. Approximately 30 members of a Japanese-American fair media representation coalition circled a stadium where she was um, performing at the Cox Arena in San Diego. Circled the stadium and then stood by the entrance with signs that says, Gwen Stefani, you're Italian. Gee, those Japanese-Americans are so mean, aren't they? <laughs> Gwen Stefani, you're Italian. And this is what Miyako Yamaguchi of the coalition told the media. If you don't already know, Gwen Stefani, <laughs> Gwen Stefani's background sing, uh, dancers are four Japanese women known as the Har Haraku girls. Is that how you say it? Huh? Harajuku. 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 Well, this starts with an H. But anyway, Gwen Stefani put it in their contract that they're not allowed to speak English to each other in public, even if they're fully capable. Damn, Gwen. <laughs> the fact that Gwen is parading the girls around isn't the big deal. But our coalition draws the line when Asians, including Japanese, are made out to all be FOBs. See, that's foreign term for, and I hear it is in parentheses fresh off the boat <laughs> yeah. made out to be wow. fobs in the media wow. then on wow. stage it's even wow. worse gwen says how much she loves the japanese culture and fashion but in her show she treats the girls like they're slaves the whole time most racist images and statements made by asians in the media are things that no one dares to make about black americans because we'll fight you that's why 
We're simply the outsiders, the foreigners, the immigrants who can't even speak English, so no one would protest. At least that's what the media thinks. They view Asians as the other, not as a part of the audience that would see racist tendencies. Wait, you got to step up? We black people have been stepping up for years. They still do it to us. Well, black people, well, I mean, um, Asian people, welcome to our side of the tracks. <clears throat> How you doing? <laughs> I was over at Lugo's <clears throat> earlier today. Hello to Beverly Lugo. Picking up um, a 16-inch number four, as long as you're asking. <laughs> so while they were putting it on the West in the back, I was reading one of their out-of-date magazines. From November of 2004, I picked up the New York Magazine um, with... Um, what people spend at Christmas time. So I figured 2004, 2005, virtually the same difference. I said, well, let me see what people are spending. So apparently there was a survey conducted by New York Magazine outside of Bloomingdale's and Saks. This is last year because the magazines at Lugo's hair are out of date. <laughs> but that's okay because your hair is right on time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway. They polled approximately 200 shoppers and asked them what their spending habits were for the holiday. 22% um, of the shoppers say that they spend about $1,000. 10% spend twice that and 13% spend about $500. The biggest spender that they stopped spent $12,000 on the holidays. Wow. Eleven percent wow. spent two thousand to five thousand. Eight percent wow. spent six hundred to nine hundred. Four percent of the people they stopped spent a hundred dollars or less. I just thought I'd share that with you. The the Billboard Awards come on tonight. So I got a telephone call during the show, and apparently I'm not going to be able to be the Billboard Awards until halfway through. But it comes on at eight o'clock, and LL Cool J is hosting. Gwen will be on stage with her um, Asian girls. Now that I told you that story, we can watch, you know, lo really looking. <laughs> you know, Sierra is going to be um, doing a medley, including Goody and One Two Step tonight. She's going to have a lot of pyrotechnics and stuff like that. And she just came off tour with Gwen Stefani. She was Gwen's opening act. Here's what Sierra says. Gwen is a totally different audience than I do. I think even with the blessing of having those two big records that I've had this year, her fan base, base is much broader. <clears throat> then R. Kelly's going to be on hand. He's going to do Let Your Light Shine, trying to make us forget. While he sings about Katrina, and all we think about is, ooh, Robert has such a big... Oh, I'm, I haven't forgotten nothing. <laughs> He's going to be on stage with a 50-member choir. Wow. Wow. Any of them little wow. uh, boys and girls? Wow. Yeah, I said boys and girls. Ow. Ow. All right. Ow. Please, can I share with you one more Mariah Carey story? Please don't be mad at me. Well, I am. So when last we talked, I was telling you about the straw. Now I just wanted to tell you because she's over in London. So she had to evacuate her hotel room over the weekend because the fire alarm went off and she came out in only her bathrobe. <laughs> That's all. It was a little tiny story, but I just wanted to share it. And now I'm going to take my business where it's wanted. Home. Love you guys for listening. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Vaughn's up next with The Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. See you tomorrow. How you How you do? Yes. Not. 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 Not.